Well, there's a YouTuber out there by the name of uh, David Pakman. Some of you may be aware of who he is. Some of you may watch him every now and then. Some of you may follow him on a regular basis. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, if the video you're about to watch offends you or upsets you, on one hand, I'm sorry, but on the other hand, I've been very vocal. I don't pull punches on this channel. If I think there's a serious issue that needs to be pointed out here, or if I have a disagreement with you, I'm liable to make a video about it. I mean, that's 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 the kind of channel this is. You know, the the the, the truth shouldn't hide itself or conceal itself just because, you know, you, 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 you don't want to, you know, hurt them with your feelings. Truth hurts sometimes. Truth hurts. If you don't like it, I mean, change your narratives, man. Change your narratives. Um, but pretty much, David Pacman has been uh, very vocal, basically. He is no supporter of Tulsi Gabbard whatsoever. Um, who he does apparently support is, like, Bernie. I think he, I know he likes Bernie. But he also likes Elizabeth Warren. Oh, you mean the, the, the fake populist candidate. Oh, that, that, that's lovely. Okay, so he does like those two, but doesn't like Tulsi Gabbard. Now, I haven't really been able to find a video where he has broken down step by step what his real issues are with Tulsi Gabbard. Now, that's not to say that there's not one out there. I just haven't taken the time to go mulling through the internet and then YouTube, basically, and trying to find that clip, uh, you know. And honestly, I don't care to listen to that many of his videos. Now, I, you know, I'm, I'm not really, I'll, I'll go ahead and say this. I'm not a fan of David Pakman. Um, never have been even before I started my own YouTube channel. Um, now, that's not to say in the videos that I have seen of David Pakman that I have not heard him say things that I could agree with him on. I'm just not a fan of his style, how he presents himself in his YouTube videos, and to me, he comes across in a lot of ways, almost like the guy on Don't Walk Run Productions, which is a smug, way too self-absorbed smartass. Um, now, I don't know the guy personally, so may maybe he's a nice guy outside of his YouTube channel. Don't know. Uh, probably will never meet the man. But... Just the way he kind of talks and handles himself, he just seems to 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 just assume and know so much. Now I get. Now I'm not saying he never presents any facts. It's just I'm not a fan of a person who just comes across. And if any of you think this about me, I'm, you know, hey, sorry. I try to at least bring fact to the table. That's why I cite you know websites and things like that. And I don't like getting in on subjects and making predictions that you know. I don't think that there's sufficient evidence to back up. Now, what you're going to see in these clips, you could say, well, David Pakman thought he had sufficient evidence too. We will discuss that in a little bit. But um, pretty much, yeah, he, he says that Tulsi Gabbard has no chance. And let's just take a listen to some clips of what David Pakman has had to say about this issue. Hey, David, is it fair not to let Yang and Tulsi speak during the debates? It's not. I've I've talked about this. We did a big piece about this on the Monday show where I explained, I think there are too many people on the stage. I think there should be five, maybe six at this point at the most based on who still has a shot and how far into this thing we are. But if you make the stage, you should get roughly equal time. I don't agree with the network making editorial decisions to say if you're polling better, you will get more time. If you're polling poorly, you'll get less time, except where we want to do it differently. And what we saw in the fifth MSNBC, the fifth debate, which was on MSNBC last week, was that, for example, Andrew Yang got drastically less time than his polling support would predict. On the other hand, Pete Buttigieg was the biggest beneficiary who got significantly more time on screen talk time than his polling would suggest. So I do not think it's fair for Yang and Tulsi to speak during the debates. I'm no fan of Tulsi's and she has no shot. But if she makes the debate, she should get the same amount of time as everybody else. Tulsi has no chance. You heard it right there with your own two ears, right? Now you're going to see this, the, 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 this video goes a lot farther as far as uh, Pac-Man's credibility with his predictions go. But 
What did he say? He thinks the field should be narrowed down to only five or six candidates at this point. Only those who have a chance, and clearly he doesn't think that Tulsi Gabbard is one of those people who has a chance. Hmm. Okay. And, and now, so, Pacman, what are you relying on to come to the conclusion that Tulsi Gabbard has no chance? Oh, these, these national polls that you're seeing. Huh? Okay. Well, in a video I just released, uh, I believe yesterday, we're talking about an MSNBC clip where, now I didn't show this part because I cut it off right after they showed uh, the national poll where Tulsi Gabbard was missing from that poll. But as I explained in that video, they later went on to explain how back in 2003, uh, running for the 2004 nomination to go against George Bush, the, the, the map at that time didn't look like what the final outcome looked like. Uh, John Kerry was way on down in the basement. Now, he wasn't at near 1%. He was at 8 But there were people definitely well above him, okay, who certainly people thought had a better chance. The first place, I believe, was Howard Dean, and the second place was Joe Lieberman, and neither one of them actually wound up doing anything once votes started getting cast, okay? Now, in a field that's much more spread out, and candidates still even hopping into this day, it would then make much more sense how those votes could even be spread out into smaller and smaller fractions, creating smaller and smaller percentages. I mean, that's common sense. So that needs to be taken into consideration first and foremost. Second of all, again, you're relying on national polls here. Um, I lost all faith. All faith in national polls telling me the truth and actually trying to be unbiased in who they poll when everyone in the land said Hillary Clinton was going to win the presidency. And keep that in mind because we will be getting back to that in just a moment. So, um, yeah, you're going to rely on that to figure out how we should narrow it down, are, are, are you, David? Um, yeah, that's that's that sounds like a brilliant plan. You're going to let this DNC... Or the mainstream media, who've both proven they're corrupt, both proven that they want to screw a populist candidate, even someone you supposedly support like Bernie Sanders, they really want to just shiv them and get them out of the way and pass it along to their corporate corrupt candidates. Yeah, that's, yeah, wow, okay. And you have how many thousands of subscribers on YouTube? <sighs> Yet I notice uh, when we get into percentages, out of all the subscribers you got, seems like only a fraction of them, and I mean a small fraction of them, are watching these videos. Mm. Let's go to Dante from Florida. We haven't heard from Dante from Florida in the new year. Dante, what's going on? Hey, David. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. So, all right. I wanted to ask you if you came to your conclusion to write Tulsi Gabbard off too early. And I have a list of things that she's accomplished or things that she's done since she announced her candidacy that should probably make you reconsider. Okay. All right. So recently, she's been the only candidate to say anything about Julian Assange's arrest, and she's been forceful about it. Bernie Sanders still, or his team still hasn't said anything about it. Um, she's clarified some of the main criticisms that people on the left have of her, like, her connection to Prime Minister Modi in India or her past positions on LGBT community. Uh, she's also um, she's also pushed some of her domestic policy agendas that people don't really talk about here, um, like her election reform bill that would mandate paper ballots in all districts or uh, some form of paper record in order to verify the votes which is very important. Okay. Um, she's, yeah, she's unequivocal on, on Medicare for all, unlike every other candidate except for Bernie Sanders, because even Elizabeth Warren, she's uh, sort of try to put out some of the corporate Democratic. By the way, I, I have to pause and interject. Notice what that guy was talking about. Tulsi's pushing for the paper ballot reform on the election. Yeah, the candidate that's supposed to be the Russian asset and the Russians interfered in the last election, according to the intelligence community, the mainstream media, the Democrats, the Republicans. Uh, 
yeah, the, the Russians interfered, and yet the Russian asset, supposedly, is pushing for the one thing that would actually help secure our elections more than these computers that they've got children able to hack into? Yeah, go look up that story. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Democratic uh, alternatives to Medicare for all, like Medicare buy-in, or lower, lowering the eligibility age, and uh, like things like that, or having an employer buy uh, an employer system similar to the private health insurance system that we have now, where your employer can give you a Medicare for all plan. So even if Elizabeth Warren's equivocating on it, but Tulsi Gabbard, Tulsi Gabbard has been clear on her position and also her foreign policy, anti-regime change and all those things. So do you think you came to your conclusion to write her off a little too early? No, I don't think so. Now, this, this, just watch that last little clip right there. Now you see what my whole problem is with this guy. It something in his attitude. And again, maybe he's not that way outside of YouTube. Maybe he's a cool guy. Maybe, maybe he's perfectly chill. I don't know. Probably will never meet the man, like I said. Um, but there, there just doesn't seem to be a lot of energy or passion in what this guy's actually doing. He seems to be like just some talking head talking about what might be his opinion or what someone might, you know, might even be paying him to say, I have no idea, but there, there just doesn't seem to be a, a lot of energy in this guy. He just seems to be this person. Hmm, yeah, no, I don't think so. Mm -mm. Yeah. Just, hmm. yeah, you're wrong, dude. No, I, I was right. I wrote it off. No. Thanks for calling, bro. God, that burns me up, man. I just, I just don't like, people who have an attitude like that um but personal stuff aside okay you don't think you were wrong to write Tulsi Gabbard off now am I going to sit here and say that it's a shoe in Tulsi Gabbard will get this nomination absolutely not it is most certainly going to be a hard fought uphill battle very hard very unlikely at this point according to those polls at least now, I'm not going to really weigh in one way or the other on what sort of chance that we has. I will say that in a big field like this, it's going to be hard for her to get it. But am I going to say that it's not possible at this point? No. And I will not say that until we start seeing some results from the early primary states. Uh, my home state being one of those. Okay. Once we start seeing who's actually winning in the primaries, then we can start making an informed decision on pretty much, okay, who's got the best chances at this point. But going off the polls that were dead wrong in 2016, uh, yeah, no no, thank you. I have no interest in believing that narrative whatsoever. And I'm not sure what this guy's issue is, why he thinks that Tulsi has absolutely no chance because of her low percentage points and why he feels that someone polling a little bit higher like Kamala Harris, possibly, because he's, he's only wanting five or six. And I think Kamala Harris, if you look at those national polls, is somewhere around like five or six. So he'd rather keep people like that, or according to even other national polls, even freaking Bloomberg is supposed to be polling higher than Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang. So with that being said, according to, that's, of course, according to MSNBC. So you would rather put some rich jackass who wants to tax the poor, like Michael Bloomberg in the debates, keep Kamala Harris, who, as Tulsi Gabbard exposed, was keeping people in prison past their sentence dates using for cheap labor for the state of California and did not want to turn over information that would have freed someone on death row until a judge ordered to do so. You'd rather keep people like that in the debates than someone like Tulsi Gabbard, who is strongly a person of her beliefs and her morals, and she will not cave on them. She proved that when she stepped down from the DNC in 2015 to endorse Bernie Sanders because she didn't like the games they were playing trying to rig the system against him. So when you hear her say, I want to get out of these wars, mm, might be a little bit believable because she's proven she'll back up what she says. She's done it before. I think she'll do it again. Now, David, 
These are your predictions. Let's take a look at a predictions you were making the night of the election in 2016. What did you have to say about all that? And I'll go ahead and warn you, I'm going to just let this clip play and hold my commentary to the end for the sake of time on the video so we don't drag this thing out way, way, way too long. But let's go ahead and listen to just what David Pakman said was going to happen in the 2016 election. It is election day and it is time for my prediction in terms of the electoral map and electoral vote count. Remember that last election I was 100 percent correct in my electoral map prediction. Doesn't mean anything about today, but I want to dive into it with you. So let's take a look at the map. Let's first talk about what is not up for grabs, right? And we will start with Hillary Clinton's base. Hillary Clinton's base I have at 259 electoral votes, and this includes the West Coast and Hawaii. This includes New Mexico. This includes Minnesota, Wisconsin. <laughs> And I'm including Michigan in Hillary Clinton's base. I know that both campaigns have been there over the last week and that there is the suggestion that it is in play. I believe that Michigan will go decidedly to Hillary Clinton and it will not be in play. Uh, basically, uh, uh, most of the Northeast, right? I mean, that we've got Vermont, New York, and Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, uh, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Washington, D.C., as Hillary Clinton's base. I am putting Pennsylvania in the Hillary Clinton camp. Pennsylvania has not gone to a Republican for a very long time. I do not believe Donald Trump is going to be the first Republican in a very long time to win Pennsylvania. <laughs> Not closes. I think it's a partial closure for Indiana, but it doesn't matter. Indiana and Kentucky are going to go to Donald Trump at 7 p.m. We are going to see Vermont go to Hillary Clinton. We are going to see Virginia go to Hillary Clinton. We will see South Carolina and Georgia go to Donald Trump. And here's where it starts to get tricky. I believe that ultimately New Hampshire and Florida are going to go to Hillary Clinton. We may not get that announcement because it may be close, but I'm going to color them in the way I think that they will end up at 730. West Virginia closes and that will go to Donald Trump. North Carolina closes. I believe ultimately Hillary Clinton will win there. And <laughs> Trump. Here is Pat, my final map. 322 to 216 in favor of Hillary Clinton. Do you disagree on any individual state here? I can't really point out any single disagreement, but it's very unlikely that the election results are going to go this way because if you look at any given scenario, it has about a 1% chance of happening. And, and that 1% chance I was right about in 2012. That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, and the most likely scenario actually is a 269-269 tie, which would be interesting to see. It most likely? What do you mean of all scenarios? Of all that, scenarios. Right. But in other words, in total the most likely scenarios are various scenarios in which Hillary Clinton wins. You suck. Um, David, that's some prediction you had back in 2016. Well, Hillary Clinton was supposed to get 322 electoral votes, was it? 300 and 22 electoral votes is what Hillary Clinton was supposed to come out with in, in 2016. Yeah, uh, you were only off by a lot. She got 232 electoral votes. My guy, you were 10 away from being off by 100 electoral votes for Hillary Clinton. Instead, it was Trump who broke the 300 threshold and only had to reach 270. Uh, yeah, by, by, by no means were you 
anywhere close to being correct in uh, your prediction there. Okay, um, you, you, you weren't close at all, okay? So yeah, um, you're, you're certainly a very, very dependable source and someone we should definitely be listening to about uh, who has a chance at this point and who doesn't, right? And, and, and again, Pac-Man, um, you're going off Tulsi having no chance because of what you're seeing in the polls. I don't trust those polls. I don't trust those polls. You know why? They're being conducted by people who have interests. They're not unbiased in who they want to poll. They all tend to only poll in certain age brackets, nonetheless, okay. And and and, and again, I think they, they deliberately pick and choose from areas who they want to poll. That way it skews it to what they would prefer the poll look like at the end of the day anyway. Okay? So as a result of that, Mr. Pac-Man, um, you trust those polls, and that's how you end up with a horrible, terrible prediction, just like you had in 2016. So you'll forgive me and the rest of the Tulsi supporters out there, and Andrew Yang supporters, if we don't buy into your opinion that they have no chance and we're going to hold off to see what starts happening in the primaries. Now, if you're right, you're right. Good for you. But we're not going to take your word for it. Instead, I'm going to keep doing what I can to promote Tulsi's message, to promote Andrew Yang's message, and people like you can keep sitting back, meandering your way around, and casually kissing corporate candidates' asses by saying that people like Tulsi and Yang just have no chance. So, keep up the good work.